Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Kairos Marie TV. Today I wanted to share with you guys my ultimate summer makeup routine for somebody with oily skin. I am from the Caribbean where it is summer 24 7 and I have oily skin. However, unlike a lot of people that I know, I don't really like going with matte primers, matte everything and baking and setting the primer with foam, with powder and then going with foundation i have just found all those steps to be unnecessary and doing too much for what i like i like skin that looks like skin it looks healthy like you have on makeup but it doesn't look too dry and keep that throughout the day keeping the oil controlled without looking completely matte that is what I go for with this routine. I really hope you guys enjoy it. I share some tips, clarify some mistakes that could help you extend the longevity of your makeup. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into this in-depth summer makeup routine for oily skin. So I like to start with some kind of hydration. So my face is already washed and like toned from this morning, but I usually go with some kind of like an essence spray, a tonic water, something to add extra hydration. Sometimes even a primer water, just depending. Okay. Then we're gonna do moisturizer. It's summer. I mean, we need SPF all the time. Honestly, I'm not good when it comes to SPF. I just use like a regular. I just go for like a regular moisturizer. But I'm trying to work on getting my SPF in. So I'm using that. And I'm gonna put that in and blend it into the skin. Any type of moisturizer I usually use, technically, it's supposed to put moisturizer underneath this, but I put the way I want. Then I'm using the Anastasia Deep Brow in the shade Dark Brown. Please. So recently, I've been loving the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. And I don't even put this everywhere, I put this in like my mostly my oily areas, so specifically or my smile lines, my nose, all into my forehead so that when I do get a little shiny there I know the makeup isn't going anywhere and I rarely have to touch up but that's one thing about me is either my full face of makeup is done at home I don't gotta touch it until I come home or I not wear makeup at all so I'm gonna take about this much like a hefty dollop and I'm gonna pack that in these areas right here smile lines in the, on the nose, like all over my nose because I actually sweat on my nose as well. Just like a little lather in the forehead, face. I want my face to be smooth. I have a problem with like being a bit porous and having textured skin. So I'm gonna go with a smoothing primer like around this part of my face. Now this, the primer, I've used this primer for like years. I'm sure I used this primer in my makeup routine last year. This is just a collection illuminating um, anti-fatigue primer. As you can see, it's pretty much finished. I need to get a new one, but it's a really just illuminating primer. It has a witch hazel in it and it just like smooths the base. It doesn't really like, it doesn't like mattify or anything, but it doesn't make me oilier or produce oil, which is really good for me. So maybe I don't need a mattifying primer, but you need like oil controlling products. For guys, forgive me if I'm a little off, it's because I haven't recorded videos in like a while. So like you take a break, you have to like jump back, jump back in and get like <laughs> again. So I don't want the milk hydrate to like dry too much because when it dries, in my opinion, it gets a little like too dry and it like ball up. So you have to like make sure it's still a little tacky so that the makeup adheres to it. And I'm using a mattifying foundation. This is the um, MUA Pro Base Mattifying. Um, long wear finish foundation i recently talked about this in a dupes video i love this foundation i feel like the coverage is amazing sharing is decent in the sense that it's even there are about like 20 shades and each in each category there are like four of each shade which isn't much but and i'm using a flat top kabuki brush and i'm going to apply that foundation by tapping motions to tap the foundation into the primer which helps to give it more coverage prevent it from smearing and by packing it in that way it makes it last longer whereas like swiping doesn't really give you as nice a finish or makes makeup last as nicely in my opinion so i'm tapping just like this to spread the product And today, you notice I didn't color correct. I just don't really have time for that during the summer. <laughs> so I take the excess from my cheeks, my mouth, and then I bring that up into my forehead. Like this. I am hungry. You should get some grapes. Y'all want some grapes? You guess, let's get some grapes. Concealer for me is one of those products that I don't really matter. 
more I use. But today I'm going to use the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Concealer in the shade 4N. And like, there's no need for your concealer to come all the way up there. Like, we waste so much concealer by doing that. I just focus it like where I have the darkness and stuff and just cover it accordingly. The blend too. I don't put any product on my chin either just because I kind of want to keep it a little darker so that way I could just keep the brightness right here and like structure my face. So I'll put that down. I know people really like to like make it sit to get more coverage and la di la di da but I don't really feel like I need to do that. So. I just start by blending my forehead, my these areas, and then get to the under eye. And again, looks like I did my foundation with a brush, with a sponge. Now I'm going to like tap, not swipe, and just keep the product exactly where I put it without moving it too much. And I'm gonna do my under eye, start with the outer part so make sure that really blends in into the foundation. And then walk my way up to the center of my eye and not patting too hard to make sure the product actually stays underneath my eye and now that that's blended everything's where it's supposed to be I am going to set the areas that I put all that down what I'm going to do now is just because these products are not my perfect shades okay I am going to blend these two powders together this is the Fenty banana powder and the Sasha buttercup powder this is too deep this is too light and my chance to set powders right now are a little sketchy not taking too much powder and using a really light hand is all you need no baking just tapping it lightly again for me tapping motions are essential to getting everything in place properly just tap to press it into the skin and just to make sure that everything is getting no like swiping and swiveling like that unnecessary and I don't use that much powder. I know I have oily skin, but I don't use that much powder. I try to avoid using too much powder because that's not the look that I want to go for. But no, now that I'm full with powder everywhere, it's time to start bringing that dimension back into the face. And I'm gonna set everywhere else. Now my skin is pretty matte already, but I'm gonna use a Maybelline Fit Me powder. I love this powder so much. This is my favorite setting powder for full face. Like. It is amazing. Not available in the UK, but it's available on like Amazon US and stuff like that. Oh yeah, a little bit. And again, pattern motions. This is the shade 35 deep. And I'm putting that on the outer part of the face to help blend it to my neck. So I usually go with this powder around the perimeter of my face because we already set the inner part with the um lighter banana powder and that helps to bring in some light dimension to the face already i love this powder brush and i'm going to take a smaller brush and just get in my nose because remember we have some powder right here i want to make sure that's set properly so i'm just gonna take the same loose powder and set the other part of the concealer tapping not rubbing and then rub it away later just so that you know what I'm saying? So as you can see, like right here, my face is like pretty much done. Everything is set up in, in its place. But it's time to like add the life back. I already kind of have the life because of how I set my face already. But I'm going to keep adding that by putting in some bronzer. Bronzer is my favorite part of makeup. I'll say it over and over again. I will never have too much bronzers. Blush and highlighter, I will always have to. I could have too much of it because I don't really wear highlighter. And I already find the blushes that I like. But I feel like bronzer, I will continue to buy. There's some bronzers right now that I'm looking at that I'm going to get. You wait and see. For bronzer, I'm using the Morphe Glamour Bronze in the shade Phenom. And this is a really nice big bronzer. But I paid £19 for it. And no Morphe having like 50% off sales and stuff like that. That'll piss me off, you know. But we're going to take some of that. On like a loose fluffy brush and again with tapping motions and not swiping tapping motions is really my biggest thing to y'all you want more coverage in your foundation use tapping tapping motion so while you make it to look more airbrush use tapping motions you want to like really get into the skin use tapping motions so in the product and we're gonna get that 
and press it in the areas where I need it to be bronze. And the reason I'm tapping off is that I don't have too much powder going on one place at one time. And this powder doesn't really have much kick up or anything in it, which is what I really love about it. It's not powdery or anything. No. I feel like every day my cheeks tend to look a little not as toned and defined because I have the hyper the hyperpigmentation peeking through. But that's a small thing that I live with and it's fine for me. But like if I had like a like a night out, I would like color correct and make sure like it's covered so that but I look as snatched as possible. But but every day, it's just fine for me. So now I'm going to set the face. Clearly my skin is not finished, my makeup isn't done, but I like setting my makeup in this in-between stage because to me that helps with longevity. It helps with making everything look a bit more seamless. Now, however, I know I just said longevity, but there is a common misconception about setting sprays. Setting sprays and fixing sprays are not the same. Setting sprays is what's gonna really help makeup look a bit more smooth and look not as powdery and look together, not as just like rough and go. It's gonna make you look a bit more polished. A fixing spray, is the one that extends the longevity that helps you not be like helps you to be transfer proof and stuff like that so like urban decay is like a fixing spray but like this or mac fix plus is a setting spray typically the names are always mixed up but yeah if you think you're setting sprays and making a makeup transfer proof try finding like a fixing spray but I always go with like something like this or Prima Water, something to really just help take away the false powdery layer. But because my makeup doesn't really look even powdery anyway because I'm a professional. But anyways, so. And again, just tapping that in to really sit in the skin. And now, what we're going to do is some eyeshadow. Eyeshadows are really important for this look, so I'm going to kind of breeze through it and do like a full matte look with some light lashes. Today I picked up my Zoeva Caramel Melange Palette because I haven't used it in a while. I'm gonna take a fluffy brush, this is the Morphe R40. Morphe brushes again, and I'm not gonna be like, go out and buy this brush because my girl. I'm gonna just take this shade Stat Soft. And on a day-to-day -day basis, I typically just have like a crease shade like this really blown out, and sometimes nothing down there, but. Yeah, let's gonna do that. And I think that's it. Like, that's really all I'm gonna do with the lid today. So, yep. And she, hmm, I said I done it and I got back in the thing again. Yeah, like, I'm so sick. Here's the problem with my eyes is that their shapes are distinct. So, like, this is a bit thinner. So, when I put on this lash, it's like cat eye. This one does look a bit more dramatic. So, I have to find like, the perfect everyday lash for me. But these are pretty good still. So, eyeliner. Eyeliners and me don't really agree, so I just have like a black shadow with a thin brush. I'm good, so close to the lash line as possible, or the lower lash line as possible. For a while, we're gonna go back to skin now and like add some blush and more bronzer and a little highlight. I'm gonna take this blush, I'm gonna start with this one again. Blush is something I switch around often, but I'm gonna just start with this one just to see if it gives me what I want. Yeah, this one right here. It looks pink, but it should come off quite like rose goldy. Yep, and I'm going to take that same shade in my inner corner. In my own little corner, in my own little chair. It's a little more. I'm going to be using the Basha White Charcoal Mattifying Makeup Setting Spray. It's like a hybrid of setting meets fixing spray because it does kind of help things like a little bit more smooth and blend in together, but it also really helps in my opinion with the longevity of my makeup. I have textured skin, but outside of the texture and my breakouts, skin looks pretty good, you know? So I'm doing my lip right now. I haven't added anything else. I'm just using the lip line, I mean the lip balm underneath. And I'm gonna add a little shape. Again, I always draw my top in an X to accentuate the cupid's bow. Two, having the hydrated lips underneath is going to make your lip gloss last longer. It's going to make your lip gloss pop more and it's going on a lot more smooth. And these kinds of lips, like glossy lips, are always 
easy to touch up throughout the day. I just love these. So one little swipe and yeah. I like to have a little bit extra shine. So just a little bit and So right now it's 11.24. This clock's gonna say 6.24 because it's in my BVI time. But I'm gonna do like a full wear test of this. 3.54, which means I've had on this face for about like four to five hours, which this would be basically your lunchtime face had you started putting on your makeup at seven o'clock to get ready for work. So, so I'm using the last little bit of sunlight. Well, not sunlight, but evening light. It is currently 9.30. So from 11.30 to 9.30, that is 10 hours. Yeah, 10 hours and the oil is not anywhere here this is a long wear routine i use it all the time i'm actually quite tired right now so yeah that's it this is my summer makeup routine for oily skin i hope you guys enjoy it and until next time you guys have been watching carries for me tv until next time peace